All right, everybody. So, oh, this drama, this this topic, this scenario just hurts me at a very deep and personal level. You see, I grew up on YouTube content. I watched a lot of different gaming YouTubers primarily growing up. And so when any of them has some drama, like, I don't know, say a favorite Minecraft YouTuber of mine ends up getting outed as a rapist or uh, like a pedophile or something. And it's like, wow, childhood ruined. Nice. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. And it happened again recently, but at arguably with a slightly less problematic uh, drama. You see, one of my favorite gaming YouTubers is The Completionist, or was The Completionist, I should say. Um, he used to do uh, a lot of collaborative content with other gaming YouTubers I liked. I remember he played through, uh, I think, Resident Evil 7 with Jesse Cox, and that playthrough was really fun, I remember. And uh, I don't know, I just, I really like The Completionist. I really liked him, at least. And apparently, for the last five years, I believe, he's been doing an annual charity stream to raise money for Alzheimer's, uh, like, research. In the name of his mom, who died of Alzheimer's. Ten years now? Holy shit. Here's the thing, though. Uh, Mudahar, or some, uh, some ordinary gamers, a friend of mine in the YouTube space, ended up doing some investigation with another uh, YouTuber named Carl Jopst. These are, like, investigative journalist YouTubers within, like, this sphere. Um, and, you know, I know that sounds like kind of a meme, like, investigative journalist YouTubers, but they do their job damn well. And they were able to find out through public tax filings that, holy fuck, all of the money from this charity over the last, like, six years has just been accumulating an account in an account and has yet to be donated. This, of course, ended up being huge. And people are talking about it, people are curious about what the deal is. I have not kept up with anything beyond what I watched on stream uh, in my last segment about this. Apparently, Muda has made an update video that, like, is going to fill us in on, on what's kind of occurred up to this point now. And I'm curious to see if we've gotten, like, a good response from the completionist, if the money has been donated, if this was all a provable misunderstanding. I don't want this to be that, like, the bad ending, right? I'm not hoping for the bad ending here, I, I swear to God. I really like his content. Yeah, Muda is really good at investigating crypto scams, you're right. There will, of course, be a link to this video down below in the description and as the uh, pinned comment, so please go send some support over to Muda's original video. Don't just watch my version of it. We're, of course, not going to be watching the whole thing on here, but we're going to watch, like, a, a sizable chunk of it to get the gist, you know? Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and today we're going to do a little update video. Now, about a week ago, I made a video in regards to The Completionist and a possible charity situation where $655,000 has not been donated to as of today. Now, as of me filming this video right now, there has been no actual statement from The Completionist from, uh, you know, anybody associated with the Open Hand Foundation. It's been almost a week, and let's just say it's a little bit irregular, but not really. Let me get into exactly what it is. So to give you a recap of the situation, me and Carl Jobst looked into the Open Hand Foundation, specifically their IRS tax filings, and we came to a finding, a very large discrepancy, where zero dollars was donated to charities, despite statements being made throughout the year's various indie land fundraising drives. And that raises money for dementia research and treatment for organizations all over the world. Uh, we're soon gonna be partnering up with the Alzheimer's Association, uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main, um, their main funding uh, support partners. Uh Dude, if this ends up being some bullshit, and he was scamming the people who donated to this charity, it might actually be one of the scummiest scams ever committed in the history of YouTube. I think it might actually end up being worse than CryptoZoo, worse than most, like, NFT scams. Like, I, I actually think it would be the number one most, like, downright evil scam ever committed by a YouTuber. Like, worse than rice gum, fake GTA videos, and fake gift card giveaways. Like, so much worse than any of that. 
uh, going into all of this. An event that was ran by Gerard, the completionist, where money was raised by fans, by industry veterans, by big companies, small and large donations. And unfortunately, none of it seemed to actually make its way towards any of these charities. The benefactors that the Open Hand Foundation listed on their website, or the few uh, organizations that Gerard had explicitly mentioned in his various indie land streams. So to give you an idea of it, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you an update of exactly what's happened, some of the new findings, and a bit of a response to some of the criticism me and Carl had received in our initial videos that dropped about a week ago. So to give you an idea, I'm going to flashbang you with a few uh, quotes from individuals that were a little bit angry, a little wilded out that me and Carl looked into this in the first place. One of them is from Pro Jared. You might recognize Pro Jared from his own controversy several years ago, but Jared decided to butt into this and provide his logical sage advice. Pro Jared says, this is horseshit. They're both making a lot of assumptions and accusations without being able to actually prove anything. Yeah, uh, the problem with that, Pro Jared, is we looked at publicly filed statements. Yeah, oof. Like, Pro Jared definitely got fucked over by the internet and false reporting, don't get me wrong, but, uh... This is clearly him coping to try and defend his friend. They, they, they literally like when you're a tax when you're a tax exempt charity organization, your tax filings are public. They are publicly searchable through the I IRS's government website. It's not very hard to find it. Uh, Muda and Carl Jobs showed all of the evidence. They showed all of the uh, like the receipts. These are government documents. These are literally government documents. They cannot be faked. They are publicly available on government websites, government documents. They are not fake. They cannot be faked. And some documents from the Internal Revenue Service of the United States. Also, we had Gerard on a call. But see, Pro Jared wouldn't know that because he never watched the videos. In the statement, Ooh. he says, almost like they're presenting the worst and trying to get views off of it. Dog, I am a larger channel than The Completionist. Uh, if anything, I'm fine getting views no matter what I upload. He is, yeah. They didn't bother trying no. to reach... The, the, this is cope as fuck. Yeah, no. The, the, the Completionist is big, but The Completionist is not Mudahar big, nor is The Completionist... I don't even think Carl Jobs big. So, um, yeah. Th this is this is the go-to copium response of YouTuber who's bigger than you is clout chasing. <laughs> Often. Like, they, 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 they're, they're bigger. They're not clout chasing, presently. At least. Reach out to Gerard about it. No due diligence. If Pro Jared stopped playing RPGs and watched my video for at least 10 minutes, he would oh. realize that, yes, I am in fact talking to Gerard. People do the same defense of Hassan. Whenever I criticize Hassan, I get accused of clout chasing every time. The Completionist. One of the most important parts about this story was the call we had with The Completionist and getting Gerard's side of the story. Now here I want to answer two questions. Question number one, why did we look into this in the first place? There was a few people that asked in my mentions on the YouTube comments for that video and generally all over Reddit as to why me and Carl even looked into this charity in the first place. To give you the most uh, the baseline answer here, Carl was tipped off about it, Carl looped me into the situation, and that's why we looked in. On my channel, you can email me, you can hit me up on Twitter DMs and give me a tip off for any weird shady shenanigan you find in YouTube. Normally, I look through almost all of them, and most of them aren't really worth looking into because it's usually just a jilted fan. When Carl looped me in about The Completionist, a YouTuber that I respected, we looked into the IRS filings, and the reason we covered this video is once we found these massive discrepancies, it was no longer a matter of, let's make this video for, again, content, it's make this video out of a sake of ethical concern. So again, that's the very simple answer to that first question. The other question that was basically being asked what is it, like $650,000 that's currently sitting in that bank account? That's a lot of goddamn money. I don't think that Muda has to make, like, an argument in favor of, here's why I think it matters that money hasn't gone to where he said it was going to go. It's 650 k dude. Like, the, dude, don't, you don't even need to engage with this bad faith shit. Like, you don't even have to. I, I don't, I, it's beyond embarrassing that anybody would say that when the evidence and the receipts are this available. They're, they're government... It, it kind of reminds me of when people tried to say that I was lying about the Lonnie thing, but then it's like, hey, arrest records are literally publicly available. There's nothing better than your receipts coming from an, a publicly available government database. There's nothing better than that. There's just... There's no way that that can be faked asked around is, did you catch uh, Gerard off the call? How did you even organize this call to begin with? 
And for our record's sake, I want to show you guys that we did our best diligence in this. Now, once Carl had sent his letter out to Open Hand Foundation, with his first and last name, Don't clearly the red alerts were sent up all over the Open Hand Foundation, the Completionist, and Gerard's family. They knew that Carl was looking into it. Now, on November 10th, 2023, I had hit up Gerard and asked him, hey man, this is over Twitter DMs, I was wondering if you'd be free for a call today. We got tipped off about a discrepancy with your guys' charity, Open Hand Foundation. Just wanted to run some of the public documents with you and get your side of the story, doing due diligence here. Now, Gerard responded to me a couple hours later and said, yeah, man, of course. I figured this was going to come up sooner rather than later, and that something huge was coming. It's been building the last couple of days, obviously, when Carl had sent his inquiry and they had their back and forth with Jacques. I'm in the middle of meeting meetings for the next hour or so. Would you give me a couple hours? So, obviously, I realized at this point, maybe this was never going to happen. Clearly, when I heard the words, they're in the middle of meetings, I thought that Gerard was probably talking to a lawyer. And lawyers will tell you to shut the fuck up, no matter what. So, at this moment in time, I kind of gave up and didn't really think that I was going to get any... I don't think he was talking to a lawyer. Or if he was, he did not listen to that lawyer, because he did get on Discord. Response. Of course, Gerard gave me his Discord information, and I said, okay, sweet, I sent you a request. Let me know when you're good to call. I need a couple hours here myself, too. I was stuck in the office myself, so, again, there was no catching anybody off guard. He knew what the call was about, and he had several hours to prepare with his team to give us a proper, logical, thought-out answer. So, obviously, later that evening, you listened to the call that we obviously played on our videos. So again, that answers the second question as well. I saw a few people talking about this and saying that maybe we caught him off guard and he didn't know anything. He had a few hours to prepare. He had a whole meeting with his team. And that's pretty much how it came out to. The happenings of that call played out the way that they did, of course, after preparation. Again, I didn't expect this call to happen because I thought lawyers would come in. Now, a bit of the other criticism that we had over here was when Dexerto, unfortunately, made a pretty damning headline. So, Dexerto, on the day of us releasing the video, said, YouTuber the Completionist is being called out for allegedly pocketing charity funds. No. This is actually what I hate about the internet game of telephone. At no point has the accusation been that the Completionist pocketed it. It's still in the bank account, sitting there, every last bit of it, um, except what's been pulled out for pretty reasonable, like, administration fees each time they do the charity event, that they take that out in order to make the event, to pay for the event. And it's it's a reasonable amount of money it's what you would expect right and and that they've disclosed that that's not anything shady the problem is the money is still there it hasn't been donated and people are under the impression that when they donate that money's in a reasonable amount of time going to end up being used for alzheimer's research right and it's not it, it's been sitting there for half a decade and that's the problem the accusation has not been that he pocketed the money it's that he has yet to donate it. Under this post from Dexerto was mine and Carl's videos. Now, nowhere in our videos did we ever say that the money was being yep. pocketed. The money just existed in the mm -hmm. bank accounts for the charity as according to the filings. And clearly, according to the filings, zero dollars was donated into these charities. So again, nothing that me and Carl said was, I guess, factually incorrect according to the statements. Dexerto made a pretty shitty headline. Now, in Dexerto's credit, they removed this- yeah, It actually sucks, too, because that $650,000 that was raised, like, that money is worth less now than it was, like, four or five years ago before COVID and, the, and the, all the inflation and uh, the pandemic and recession and whatnot. Amended it, and even one of their heads contacted me and told me- Not by a lot, but- up. So, again, I gotta give them some level of respect where respect is due. But again, this tainted the well pretty bad. So again, other creator says, I didn't watch the full videos of accusations, but like, why is this stuff even public? Because the tax filings are public, you idiot. Like, they'd, they'd even try talking to him first. Again, why even throw your fucking hat into the ring if you haven't watched the videos? If you watched 10 minutes, not even the whole video, you would realize that, yes, I did my due diligence. Yeah, Dexerto is actual uh, gruel. Like, they're slop. Um, there is pretty much most Twitter accounts that are known for posting media or drama news are just slop accounts and you should not follow them on Twitter. And they are bad. It's me and Carl did. So again, another creator says, wild drama, didn't expect to get involved in one. Uh, this isn't drama. What other creator says, this is unethical, immoral, and potentially illegal activity. That's not drama. See, this is an adult responding. So again, here's another genius. It looks like a couple of YouTubers looking to gain some sort of fame. Bro, my channel is magnitudes larger. Why, what fame am I looking for? Again, this isn't a dick measuring contest. It's just simply destroying your fallacy. 
There have been several times when charitable money was donated to the wrong organization, and they did move it to something else. I trust Gerard. Again, dude, it is not that hard as a YouTuber to find a reputable organization to do donate your, your money to, okay? There are entire websites that are, like, very well known. Like, like uh, I think it's called Charity Watchdog or something. Um... I forget exactly what its name is, but uh, I'm pretty sure you guys in chat know. That's literally a non-for-profit site that that's whole goal is, like, investigating and verifying charities to ensure that they are, like, legit. So if you have a charity you want to donate to, you can look it up on that site and find out whether or not it's legit. And these the sites that do that, the, like, very well-known ones, have a very high, uh, uh, like rate of being correct yeah like the the trevor project is a good example of a charity that's like very well known nobody there, there's probably not any shady shit going on there right this wouldn't be a story had these statements been properly made my personal favorite is incredibly depressing that over the last few years we've ping pong from no youtuber is ever held accountable ever to knock off keemstar found some why weird paperwork better cancel gerard's entire bloodline yeah i guess to this idiot that weird paperwork is an actual irs filing again please enter yeah, dude, you know when people start resorting to weird and, like, weirdos and knock off Keemstar as, like, an insult response to receipts, it's just copium. They're just trying to, like, appeal to their own audience and appeal to the existing audience that doesn't like said YouTubers that are calling them out. For the real world, please become a fucking adult. That's all I ask, okay? Simple as put out. Now, I'm going to respond to some pretty accurate criticism. This was posted by an account known as The Little Wooly. Now, this was shared around a lot, and this is actually the account of an individual that claims to work as an accountant for a nonprofit 501c3 organization for 7.5 years now, with, I guess, an additional two years in the accounting profession. Okay. I'm not here to, you know, disprove or, or question anybody's credentials. I'm going to take his word for it, okay? It is what it is. So he says he looks at the situation. He says the Open Hand Foundation is a small, family-run foundation, and while having 600000 in the bank is quite a bit of money, in reality, it's a tiny amount in the grand scheme of things. So while, yes, they should have probably sent the money off to be used for research after years of collecting the money, it seems to me, based on Gerard was saying in the videos, that not only were they wanting to find the right organization to give the money to, that they wanted to make sure the money is actually used for dementia research. Which, yes, Gerard said they wanted to, I guess, evaluate the right, you know, partner. And that's even what they wrote in their statement. They wanted to make sure their money was actually sent to the right. Five years? That's the thing, though, right? Like, it took five years? Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, they do charity as, like, at, like, they, like, they breathe. They do charity like they breathe. Granted, these are much larger, more popular, and wealthy YouTubers, but, like, th they're donating much bigger funds in much shorter periods of time to charities, and they're not having any problem finding ones that are reputable. Certainly not, it, it's not taking them years. That's why it comes off as so insincere when they say, we're just trying to find the right charity. Yeah, Jacksepticeye does a yearly char uh, charity called Thankmas. Right place. Had this been proper public knowledge on the IndieLand website, the Open Hand Foundation website, and those streams, this wouldn't even be a video. Had people just known their money was being stockpiled rather than, you know, being told that, yes, we're raising money for dementia research and we're working with so-so and so. So again, the response here is... Is it dementia or is it Alzheimer's? I thought it was Alzheimer's. Did I mix it up? I could have sworn it was Alzheimer's and not dementia. Did I... Did I just misremember? It's Alzheimer's. Okay, I'm pretty sure dementia is like, it's either Alzheimer's is a symptom of dementia or dementia is a symptom of Alzheimer's. I think dementia is a symptom of Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's is a disease that causes degeneration of your brain matter. And I think dementia can like manifest as a as a symptom of that. So um, they're, they're, they're not the same thing, but they're tied in together to a degree. Um, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. Oh, so I have it wrong. It's the other way around. Okay, my bad. I guess dementia is like a broad term for degenerative brain conditions. Dementia is a broader category that includes Alzheimer's. So is, is it just a category for... I'm just going to Google it. Fuck it. I'm curious. A condition characterized by progressive or persistent loss of intellectual functioning, especially with impairment of memory and abstract thinking, and often with personality change resulting from organic diseases of the brain. Okay, yep. Cool. So d dementia is the broad umbrella category um, for, like, anything that causes consistent 
uh, like degenerate degeneration of brain function. This is where I have a few issues with Mudahar's video. Why not just donate it? Organizations ask for as little as thirty-five dollars. Yes, I said that. So this person enlightens, and this is actually good good information. For a general unrestricted donation, from the sounds of it, Open Hand would really like the money to be focused on a specific purpose, or as we would say, they want their donation to be restricted. Now, for a smaller nonprofit like where I work, we take in a lot of small amounts to be used for restricted causes, such as use in a specific program to buy certain items. Larger national or multinational organizations like the Alzheimer's Association are too big to track those tiny donations. As Gerard says, the money would go to waste. And if you want your money to not just go into the hands of a CEO or other administrative costs, you want to see some tracking of your money going to work for the desired cause. So he also says you can't pin the money still being there on Gerard. He has only one vote in a foundation with other members of his family. That is true. But we'll get to this in a little bit. So yes, it's true. I learned about unrestricted and restricted donations. Now, according to Investopedia, restricted donations, uh, when a donor determines, typically fund designation is specified in writing the donor determines if the funds are to be restricted. Typically, fund designation is specified in writing in what is termed the gift instrument. Foundations that provide restricted funds often describe how they want their money allocated when they distribute the reward. Nonprofit organizations can avoid confusion about how they intend to spend a donor's funds by offering a choice of designation. A cancer research nonprofit, for example, could give donors a choice to allocate their funds to any one of uh, any one of breast, skin, or brain cancer clinical trials. So here's my issue. I'm not seeing anything here that says there's like a floor to how small the donation can be for most Alzheimer research uh, charities. For it to be a restricted donation that you can say, here is where I want the money to go for the charity. Like, I don't see anything that says it has to be a certain amount of money. And I didn't see anything in that person's explanation that really explained why the money would be going to a CEO if it wasn't a big amount. Like, why did it need to be hoarded for five years? Like, surely each year, or maybe even by year two... Each year they were making enough money to just make the donations and make them restricted donations with whatever charity they choose. Also, you can't really say the he has no power over this when it's his reputation on the line. With the fact that everybody sees it as the completionist's charity means that he should have a much bigger vote realistically. Like this is run on his channel. He hosts it. Like he's the guy. It's the completionist's charity. It's in his mom's name. In what is termed the gift instrument. Foundations that provide restricted funds often describe how they want their money allocated when they distribute the award. Nonprofit organizations can, avoid, can avoid confusion about how they intend to spend the donor's fund by... Restricted donations can be any amount. Yeah, it feels... Like a nothing argument, you know? Offering a choice of designation. A cancer research nonprofit, for instance, could give donors a choice to allocate their funds to any one of breast, skin, or brain cancer clinical trials. So again, while this could very much be true, let's go further into this actual uh, breakdown. Why wouldn't they just donate, you know, XXX instead of just 35? Come on, Mudahar! Can't you think of any organization, nonprofit, and or for-profit that would refuse to make your money their money? They'll gladly take your 35 bucks and use it how they see fit, which may be to add it to the CEO's salary, which is fine, right? Like, obviously, I get it. They want to build a large enough money where they can restrict it and make sure that a CEO doesn't get it. But again, this should have been relayed. So again, he also comes up and- Also, there, where, where is the evidence that that amount can't be restricted? Where, where's, the, where's the claim that, like, up until now, or even now, there's not enough money to make a restricted donation that can specifically be allocated to- the charity's choice of research but it's a non for my mom's talking from the other room you guys can't hear it she she said something but it's a non-for-profit so it's like it, it's and it's tax exempt that's why we're able to see these these irs documents in the first place so it's not for tax reasons could it be the tax reasons for the institution they're donating to maybe that doesn't really ah uh, that would be that would be a poor defense if they're doing it just for the tax benefits of the organization they're donating to well let's continue
tells us about the IRS filings where he discusses that the signatures, Carl actually focused how some filings didn't have signatures. And I would have to imagine personally, my involvement with the IRS, the CRA, and all these organizations, electronic signatures sometimes don't show up in public filings. I don't know if it's a privacy complaint or something of that nature, but that's maybe the only logical response I can think about it. If you don't have a signature, I think that's like an immediate audit, okay? But again, I'm not a CPA, so again, please make sure to talk to a CPA. This is just what I've heard relayed. To my knowledge, the org sets the limit. Yeah, but why wouldn't they just find an org that has a limit that works for them? Like, I don't know. It's just, eh. let's watch. From accountants that I've spoken to. I want to, for open I want to believe that Gerard is like in the right. I want to believe that this is just an un, uh, like, like, I, I want to believe that this is just a unfortunate mistake. Hand are very bare bones, but you should blame that on the CPA firm that made them. They could have easily broken the expenses down to specifics, but because of how small open hands is and how little in donations they bring in on a yearly basis, there's probably no regulation saying that the firm had to get specific. If the government wanted to look into this, I'm sure all the paperwork for things like lawyer fees, accounting fees, filing fees, insurance, costs, etc. are there. And the CPA firm has probably seen all of them. So again, uh, yeah, he says the drama seems a bit overblown. Camera's what little Wooly <laughs> fails to exactly go into it is how Gerard claimed in our own interview that he had all this yes yeah, so this is basically the the biggest argument against gerard is how much his story changed in the discord uh interview that they did in the in the previous video where at the start gerard has like no way of explaining what happened and then like after a bit of the conversation has passed and he's had some time to think he comes up with a story at least that's how it com came off to me is he came up with a story um yeah, Ugh. the fact that he contradicts himself in audio form is really rough to see. In that call, he literally said nothing. At the beginning, he says that he has, like, basically no idea what happened. He doesn't know what to tell them. And then, like, five, ten minutes later, he's explaining, well, I actually, we're, we're saving up the money. I heard about this recently. The money's still being there and this being a problem. And, you know, I've been, I've been wanting to solve it. But then I got reached out to by Carl. And I didn't want to make it look like I was only donating the money now to avoid consequences. And it just came off as really weak. It came off as really weak, guys. Watch my original video on this if you want to see what I'm talking about. It came off as not the best defense from him in audio form. This money, right, sitting in the account, and he knew about this since at least 2022. In the video, he said 2021, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Gerard, and I'm just going to let you listen and say that he mentioned 2022. So, irregardless, I'm going to show you a clip after you heard this call once yeah, again regardless. that doesn't really make it better. I knew it was sitting there uh -huh. at a certain point, and that's what me made me proactively go about it. Like, Do you know when that point was? I was made aware in 2021 where the, the money hadn't moved yet. Okay. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move it. And did anyone, what year? 2021. He clarified to 2022. Dude, his story changes so much in that audio call. It's actually crazy how many times his story changes. It's really rough, dude. Last year, 2022. Yeah. Did anyone tell or, you that the, the money was going somewhere before then? Were you being misled? No. No, 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 no one told me anything. I was, I assumed that it was all going to a charity and I, I assumed incorrectly. So now that Gerard has said that he was notified about this since like, I guess, 2021, 2022, listen to this podcast that Gerard was on November 4th, 2000 of 23 this year. So this is the Friends Per Second podcast, episode 33. This is up on Skillup's channel. I want to also stress for the record, none of these people have anything to do with this. They actually made a really good response to this situation in their most recent podcast episode. But I'm going to play this clip and it's pretty damning. Listen to this. Do our own version of that every year and kind of make it a cool celebration of of games and raise money for a you know charity and so he was like i wish we had a charity that we could donate to and i was like oh i i run my own charity called the open hand foundation and all the money that we aggregate i mean i started it when i was a young a young boy with my dad in honor of my mom who had dementia and so uh we just every dude i really hope he's telling the truth man i really hope he's telling the truth i i really really hope he's telling the truth with like every fiber of my being Year, we try to raise as much money as possible and then we go work with you know alzheimer's association of america university of san francisco um association for ftd which is what my mom had ftd so we've like worked with 
big and small organizations across the board. And he was like, it'd be really cool if we did a show. Yeah, the fact that he, in the statement, they say they've been looking for the right organizations and they're listing organizations they've worked with is... uh... Mm. All about raising money for people who are making huge headways in, in dementia research and prevention and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. We have the organization to do it. We just, you know, need to come up with a theme. And so I am I literally am, am, am about to, like, donate all this money today. And, and, and prior to that, earlier this week and the week before, and I've just been sitting here crippled trying to figure out the best way to handle this. Because I felt like if I donated the money the minute you guys emailed me, it'd be a situation of, well, he's trying to hide it. And he's admitting guilt by doing that. Well, what, what, no, honestly, no, if he donated it right away, what would people have to be angry about at this point? His fans would have an anchor point to defend him from like, Hey, the money got donated. So like, yeah, I, I actually think that the right thing to do was to donate the money as soon as supposedly he found out shit was fucked. And... I never felt that way, but I understand completely that you guys could easily argue that, and it would just make me look more like a scumbag. And, um, you know, I I just wanted, you know, I, I wanted to write by you guys and what you think. When you guys got the email and I said, please tell us about benefactors, that was genuine because I haven't found a benefactor that I'm completely happy with, and I want to make sure that this money goes to a good cause. And he claims he hasn't found a benefactor despite publicly listing charitable organizations that the charity has supposedly worked with. We saw the, li the, the list he gave on that podcast a minute ago. It's, it doesn't look good because the contradictions are, are plentiful. And that's not, it's not great. Honor of my mom. And I'm upset that the conversations I've had haven't gone the way that I wanted. And I'm willing at this point to just donate the money to whoever. I want it to go in the right spot. Now, again, I played that clip for all context, okay? I extended that to make sure that people could realize that in this, he mentions specific charity names. Now, remember back to the definition of charity fraud that we talked about. It's pretty f***ed up when behind the scenes you're telling us that you're still evaluating charities. You're asking us which charities to work with while conversely actually mentioning them by name publicly in live streams. Less than 14 days old at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, this gets into some serious false statements. And again, I could imagine what the government of the United States or the state of California would think about this situation. Again, this is very, very, very damning shit to witness. And again, that call Gerard had with us probably was one of the dumbest decisions he could have made because in that call, he confirmed with us that the money was in the account. And again, we took his word for it. But um, the important thing is that all the money is still in the account. None of it's spent erroneously. It's all above board. Like it's not, it's not. Doesn't break the charity promises though. Yeah, I mean, enough. I feel like it's what he it's enough that there is a universe I can see in which this is all a misunderstanding, right? I can see a universe existing where this is all a misunderstanding. That could be the one we're in. I'm just getting less sure the further into this drama we get. Not hiding in a Cayman account or anything like that. Again, I am believing Gerard at his word at that time, and I'm looking at the tax filings. If they claim to have $655,000 in an account, then just donate it. The fact that these guys have not made a statement yet, and again, I get it, this is an issue of criminality. Obviously, lawyers are going to be vetting everything that you say. But I think when you tell me and Carl that you have the money sitting in the account, then that's, you should at least show a bank statement. Show a bank statement as soon as you can that verifies the account is still, you know, filled with Untouched. that cash. And then donate, yeah. right? What's really f***ed up in this situation is even if the account has that money, over the years, through inflation, it has lost its buying power. That's what I said before. Holy shit. Yeah, no, it has. Yeah, that's the big thing, right? Because what, what, when did this all start? Like 2018, 2017 is when the money started accumulating in that account. So like we've had COVID, a recession, and uh, just all sorts of bullshit happen. So much inflation go down since then. So yeah, the buying power of that money has gone down, not by a lot, but by a bit. So if it had been donated sooner, it would have gone to a slightly more tangible amount of good than it can now. And because of that, that money has less of an effect than had it been donated in the years that it was raised. That's the real problem with the situation. It's not even just that the money is sitting there. It's that as it continues to sit there, from all we know, it's just losing its value. Again, the Is there any possibility maybe that the money is stored in an account that has a interest rate? 
Because you can gain interest on having money in a savings account. If it's not to a checking account, many savings accounts with a lot of banks have um, accruing interest. So while it's a very small amount, it's possible it could have at least taken a chunk out of or maybe even overcame inflation with that much money in the account. Like it's a lot of money in the account. So the percentage increase from a potential accruement would be possibly able to outdo inflation. Someone who knows the economy better than I and is able to do the math over the course of these years would have to figure this out. And I don't even know if like, uh, you would need to know that bank's interest rate. You would have to know whether or not it's saved in an account that even has um, an accruing interest for your savings. Like it could be in a checking account and those don't really do that usually, at least from my experience. So yeah, it's hard to say. The important question is, can we even see if the money is still in the account? All we have is to go off of Gerard's words, which unfortunately, because of his statements, he is not a truthful individual as far as my opinion is considered. Beyond that, according to their tax filings, yes, I'm going to look at them and say they probably have the money in the account, but the tax filing is not a bank statement. So we don't even know yet, all right? And I think that's kind of safe to say. Right now, the question is, is the money there? If it's there, yeah, I mean, her and Shonen, at the very least, we can say his goal was probably not to pocket it. That That's like the best thing he has going for him right now is that the money has remained untouched in the account up until the point of the most recent tax filing. ...and show people that, yes, the money is there, we're going to be doing an accurate accounting, and just donate it to the parties that we claim to be donating to. At the end of the day, that's really the best possible ending to the scenario. Look, like I said in my previous video, at best, this is severely gross negligence. And even then, that doesn't protect you criminally. And at worst, if the money isn't there, we are getting into a serious, illegal situation. And I kind of wish that the people who were complaining about the story would have actually seen this, right? Again, one of the responses was, again, to that little- It started in 2014, okay. Wooly post. This is where my mind is at. Considering Gerard is always having his ass out for communities, charities, and developers, where the others two, me and Carl, are just drama sensationalist YouTubers. Again, I'm sorry that your brain cells are so- cook that you think possible criminal action is just drama when it's really not this is a matter of ethics this is a matter of people being defrauded potentially allegedly and it should be rectified as soon as possible even little wooly said yes i'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit on some of the more common responses they held the money for 10 years agree not a good look would have been better to publicly disclose that info that's literally what me and carl said as I said in the replies, name dropping orgs is a bit weird when the money hasn't exchanged hands. Although I hope my guess of large restricted donations is what is actually being planned. Again, this is just him being hopeful that these are large restricted donations. And again Yeah, everything at Lil Wooly, the person who wrote that entire like list of paragraphs, is claiming is speculation. Like all of all of what they've said is speculation, but Muda and Carl have provided government tax documents that are publicly available and impossible to fake. That's the thing. Again, the original post is just my guess based on my professional experience and what I've seen or heard in these videos. I could be completely wrong, but I think hope I'm onto something. Again, Little Wooly is also speculating in the situation. And yeah, I appreciate his actual response into the situation. I do wish that he also addressed I don't like Muda's attitude. He seems hungry at the bit for me. Nothing to say on the content, though. Seems weird to keep that much in a rando account for no reason. Um, this is just always how Muda talks. Like, he's just a very animated guy. Like, he, he just talks this way. This is just how his, all of his videos are. He usually goes after crypto scammers and stuff. And, like, he does a lot of dark net videos where he goes over, like, weird, creepy shit on the dark web. Deep web shit or whatever. Rest those misleading statements. Now, even Gerard said he has a paper trail of all of his communication with these organizations, which I would love to see. I hope these get published in due time. Obviously, lawyers are going to have to check all of his statements before they ever go live. So at the behest of making this video longer than oh. previous, I looked further into the Open Hand Foundation, and obviously, there was another event that was running the situation. PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge, which is a golf oh. challenge that, of course, these guys were running. Another challenger has entered the ring. Holy fuck. I wasn't expecting this twist. Running for quite a long time. <laughs> Literally another challenger. Now this entire like PBD West Convenience Cup challenge had its own set of sponsorships. So as a company, you could give them up to $10,000 to get your company name featured throughout this golf tournament. There are photos from their actual golf tournament, which showcases that some brands like Monster Energies, Rye's Coca-Cola Bottling, Keurig Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Cormark, a lot of these big brands are showing up in this situation. And again, even their own brand, also, PBD West shows up as well. 
So again, with these big brands like First Citizen Bank, I really hope they realize what they're getting into, where their money is going to. Because according to their own website right here, you write a check to the Open Hand Foundation. So alongside IndyLand, it's this golf tournament that's also raising money as well. So there are a lot of parties that deserve actual answers that go beyond just gaming. The PBD West myself, this company, and in their success page, what I found really hilarious here was uh, apparently they worked with Monster Energy, right? Now off the top, this doesn't seem like a 1998. Deal, but if you look closely, they mentioned this happened in 1998. What's insane about Monster? Did Monster not, a yep, 2000. 2002, I thought so. Monster didn't exist back then. Monster's like a relatively new thing. Monster Energy is it was actually introduced in April 18, 2002. And again, you can look at this by their trademark details. For instance, right here, yeah. you can see according to Monster Energy, their first use in commerce date was literally 2002. Um, I think it was uh, April of 18th April of that year. So they could have waited two days to make it base, but generally the idea here is, uh, again, it's hard to believe if they partnered with a company. Yeah, they could they could have waited two days to make it base. It could have been 420. Uh, literally before, I guess, they were ever really known to the public. Maybe they had a time machine. But the more I looked into it, the weirder this website got. <laughs> I, I love that wording. They could have waited two days to make it based. Because <laughs> it'd be 420. I don't know. There's something about that wording. Just so, just so casually saying that and just moving straight on makes me chuckle. But again, this is not necessarily pertinent to the charity. It's just one of these things that is stuck into my head, again, as I looked into it. So one weird discrepancy we also found recently was on the Alzheimer's Association. They actually had a blog that was talking about the completionist and how he shared the story of his mom and this foundation. And its blog post has actually just been removed. All right, literally, if you take the actual link off of Wayback Machine, Put it into Bro? a web browser, you'll find out that, yeah, apparently even these charities are cutting their connections or ties publicly on their blogs, which doesn't really bode well. So I went further into this situation and looked into the state of California's Department of Justice e. uh, charity lookup. So again, you can do this for yourself. Going to this link, rct.doj.california.gov, verification web search.aspx, facility equals Y. Yes, I'm going to spell the whole thing out. So even the 11 year More olds who were shells. criticizing our video initially can go down this breadcrumb trail with us, okay? Yes, I am gonna be sassy as Now in this situation, you can type the organization as Open Hand Foundation, and you'll find three versions of Open Hand. We're gonna go to the one that's currently registered. So opening that one up, it'll give you details of this organization. And it'll also give you their various documents as well. Inside their documents, I looked through the founding papers, and in the founding papers, it was actually pretty noticeable where we found out in page 12, where it actually talks about, you know, uh, who's in the leadership. So for instance, Kaylee Khalil, the director, the only one to get, I guess, $1,000 in compensation, which again, isn't that much. I assume that's for a formality's sake. So inside here it says Magdalene Ibrahim plans to marry Charles Khalil. So I assume Magdalene is the new wife of Charles, obviously, as the statement has written. And in this, you can see that Gerard, Kelly, Magdalene, Jacques, Layla, Charles are listed as basically the directors of this operation. So in contrast to the original IRS documents, the California versions showcase they actually do work hours. So Gerard works 40 hours on this. And here, Gerard is providing marketing and promotion, which obviously he's doing through IndyLand. And he's also evaluating- Yeah, so it seems like most of the people involved are his family members. They all have the same last name as him, except for Magdalena Ibrahim, which is, uh, or Bream? I don't know how to pronounce that, that last name, I'm sorry. Um, who seems to be like the one who gets paid because they seem to do the most work. Waiting charities to donate to and consider fundraising activities. So according to this filing, Gerard like is the taking director. an active approach in looking for charities as well too. And being a director, he obviously has to know what's going on in this organization. See, he was told that the money was still sitting in the account, but that's me being very charitable. Again, I run businesses too. And being the director of my businesses, I know pretty much generally what's going on in all of them. I have to, legally I need to. But the point I'm trying to make is being the director of an organization, a charity that is built on your dead mother's name, you should have at least a rough idea of what's going on. You can't just throw money into it and just pretend that it's gone. Take your sibling's word for it, okay? You should probably be looking into it at least every year as you're filing your taxes. I get that Gerard is a busy guy, I'm a busy guy too, but you all take time out of your day during tax season to check all of your, to, 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 to dot your we eyes Americans and cross your hate teams. it. So of course, some people have- Is Muda Canadian? Don't they have like, in Canada, do they make you file your own taxes where you have to like, go over all your goddamn statements, go like, add it all up, buy the fucking penny, the fraction of a penny, 
and then like make sure that you qualify for certain tax deductions and uh, refunds and make sure you don't accidentally check anything you're not supposed to because if you say say you have a dependent when you don't that's like a big fucking deal like like do they still do that in canada okay yeah i know in a lot of countries they just straight up pull your taxes out of your paycheck that's so much better the reason why we don't have that here in uh, america is that companies that uh, offer services, uh, like basically accounting companies, um, they lobby the government to keep us from having something like, I don't know, I think Switzerland, they just dock your taxes from your pay and that's it. And I think it's maybe included in purchases. Um, and that's it. Like, there's no tax season. There's no, like, tax filing season where you have to go through all the bullshit. That's very, like, much a North America thing more control over this, like Magdalene Ibrahim, who apparently has 200 average hours worked at the company, which again, annually, that's not much at all, but they're the treasurer, management, and administration. So again, this seems like the person that has the most control over this operation, and I guess by definition, Charles. But Gerard should have some say, especially given that he is the face of this operation, especially through IndyLand. One thing that I also looked through with their California filings that I guess I want to mention is, while in their uh, actual 2022 filings, they mention how their book value is $655,520. Now, some people have said, could they have been skimming off interest? Again, this is in a cash, non-interest bearing line. There we go. We got an answer to that question I asked before. They are not accruing interest, which means the point Muda made earlier about the money losing buying power due to inflation stands true. That account and the money in that account is not gaining any accruement of wealth, none whatsoever to even try and uh, like fight back against inflation. That's not good. It's definitely not good. That means Muda's argument from before completely stands. Why? which means that they don't have a savings account. They literally had no investments, no savings to offset the loss that they would get from inflation. Again, some charities do it, but this isn't really that much money for them to be thinking about investments, at least from my personal perspective. Now, in this statement, they said that the fair market value was zero dollars. Dog, how can you have $655,000 in, in US month currency and then say the fair market value is zero. That makes no sense. Again, the way that this is filed, I feel like the accountant over here just did not give a shit. Now, one of the things that I wanted to make a point of this is, do you want justice to be delivered? So I'm gonna teach you guys how to report this properly. Now, obviously the IRS may or may not look into this. They probably might be, but being that they're a federal agency, maybe the money isn't into them. If you want any agency to look into this, because the they're pretty much- The IRS is pretty on top of things. I do think the fact that nothing has really come out of this from the IRS already is a pretty good sign. Like five years and hundreds of thousands of, like hundreds of, $650,000 at this point, supposedly being falsely filed and falsely handled in a felonious way? Like, that's gotta, like, that level of embezzlement would have been noticed by now. Like, m maybe not 100% of the time, but, like, I, I feel like it would have been noticed, at, like, by now, right? More likely than not. Much, you know, obligated to? Check the state of California. Now, Gerard, the completionist, uh, the Open Hand Foundation is hosted in the state of California, which, by the way, is the strictest f***ing state in the union in regards to charities. So if you want something done, please go to the oag.california.gov slash charity slash complaints, the fill union. out form CT9, all right, print this out, write everything you need to, email it to the state of California, or click on the contacts the complaint program, enter your first last name. Dude, you know what this reminds me of, but obviously not evil, like what I'm about to use as an example was? When OnlyFans first started to become a thing and like the incel dude bros were super pissed about it, so they did the, um, the thought audit. Who remembers the thought audit where, like, dudes were reporting uh, women who did sex work and OnlyFans to the IRS back in, like, late 2018? It was, like, this big trend. Like, oh, you just got reported to the IRS. Enjoy your audit or whatever. And it's like, I'm pretty sure most of these women are probably paying their taxes. I, I think I think they're probably going to be fine. But, like, there was this idea that they weren't, so they, they did the thought audit. Yeah, like, incel dudes have been desperate to, like harm women for a very long time. It's nothing new. Your organization and tell them exactly why you think this charity should be investigated. I think it's pretty obvious by now. And with enough reports, the state of California at least has to- Oh yeah, for those that don't know what I mean, it's T-H-O-T -T audit, like thought, like the sexist term for woman. Knowledge and start actual proceedings into investigating this charity. Again, 
I just care about money being donated. That's it. And I think at the end of the day, if Gerard has this money, he should prove that he has the money and donate it to the charities that he's claimed. Look, as I wanted to make possible. this video to basically address a lot of the criticisms that we got, which I think I fairly did. I wanted to look further into the situation and basically discover just the breadth of the work that Gerard was on with this charity. I have to say, I think that Muda does some of the best investigative journalism on YouTube. He does befriend and, uh, you know, engage with some people that I'm not the biggest fan of politically. But overall, um, his takes are pretty good. My first time ever interacting with him was technically a video I did responding to him on a take he got wrong. Um, I showed why he was wrong and my evidence for it. He ended up seeing the video, responding, oh shit, yeah, you're right corrected his position, and ended up following me. And he generally has pretty damn good positions on most issues. It's like a, a, it's like a very, like, once in a blue moon thing that he sometimes misses, because he's definitely not, like, immersed in politics. It's easy to kind of just, like, lack some of the context when a certain culture war issue kind of gets into your, like, fr like, field of view. If you're not, like, super into politics, you don't know the context of this, like, bit of culture war issue will come in front of you and you might take a position that looks good if you don't know the context, but then, you know, someone explains it to you and you're like, oh, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I think the video is really good. Please go send your support to Muda. He's a, he's one of the best content creators making videos like this. And I mean, if you're invested in this, then you definitely want to be tapped into the evolving story for sure.